My name's Kate Chase and I am a photographer's agent and I also have a side business consulting with retouchers. My name's Ken Hall. I'm a career director at an ad agency called Duncan Shannon, San Francisco. I'm James Wood. I'm the uh, executive director of the uh, School of Photography at the Academy of Art University in San Francisco. So my name's Chris Orwig and I'm a photographer, author, and teacher. And I'm on the faculty at Brooks Institute in Santa Barbara, California. Eric Almas to me is a um, truly a modern day photographer. He's got the skills and the appreciation for the science of photography. He's got the experience of working with film and uh, he's also mastered in my opinion Photoshop. So to me he's the my definition of modern day photographer. His pictures, they ask questions rather than give answers, and that there's a little bit of mystery to them. I think early on, Eric had a, uh, a, uh, a knack at pre-visualizing the end product, which makes it a lot simpler. There's no guesswork then. He gets the right elements to put together to get something he's already seen in his mind, which is a great trait for um, people who illustrate or tell stories, editorial photographers, illustrators. And in my mind, what differentiates him from other photographers is that he can't really be um, labeled with the typical labels. In other words, it's as if he's a fine art photographer that does commercial work, or he's a landscape photographer that photographs people. And it's not that, that really that he does one of those things, it's just that he does all of these different things that are blended together. And, and as far as, say, the fine art approach, it's that his images are full of aesthetic and beauty, and that that's almost more important than commerce, yet they're commercial photographs. So many times when you come up with an idea, it has to be executed in a certain way, and you want a photographer that's going to bring something to the table, but you also want whatever's brought to the table to be something that's going to improve on that idea. Um, you know, so many times imagery can make or break an idea um, with advertising, with a print ad, um, or you know, anything for that matter, a brochure or, or something. So I think Eric consistently improves upon the idea that's brought to him. He's always pushing forward, whether he's reading books on philosophy or wine tasting, or he's always expanding and evolving. And I think the fact that he started, he started probably not with a goal in mind necessarily, um, but he found it pretty quickly. Some photographs you look at and you get them right away and say, okay, I got it, it's good, but it doesn't last very long. His pictures I find I can kind of go back to, and as I change, the pictures change, or, or depending on the mood I'm in, I see something that's a little bit different. I think that if you look at an Eric Almas picture, um, people who are curious will want to know how he made that image. And then I think there are those who just enjoy it for its just pure beauty. And then I think that there are those who uh, it inspires something in them to make pictures like that themselves. So I think that there's a, everybody can take something away from an Eric Almas image and they're all very different. A lot of photographers don't don't understand advertising, or or they don't care, because um, there's practical realities to my finished product that I need to get. Um, and the the sad reality is that that beautiful shot that's going to be shot um, at that shoot that everyone spent so much time and money on um, is not going to live on its own in the end. It's going to live with copy, and it's going to live with a logo, and it's going to live probably with a different crop. Things like that. Um, so that's something that's really critical is that that photographer has to understand that end product. He's got problem solving skills. He's calm. He's philosophical. He's romantic in his, his view of the world. And he's a really good Photoshop artist. He's probably one of the best artists I've seen. He's a teacher and he's not someone who is kind of in all of this for himself, but he's interested in 
exploring how to share these ideas and, and talk about his own journey in a way that it gives insight into other people's journey, my own included. And personally, one of the things I've taken away from spending time with Eric is that often I think too small. And I was talking with him about one of his photo shoots and he was explaining the idea and afterwards I just kept thinking, I have to think bigger, I have to think bigger. Students look at his um, portfolio online uh, and he's kind of held up as a goal. I'm sure a lot of them would, uh, would be very happy to be anywhere near his success. And again, his success is based on, uh, I believe, on consistency and, and a, real, a real marketing ability. One of the great things I like about uh, Eric's, the way he works, is I know what I'm getting before I even leave the set. Um, you know, the great and bad thing about um, compositing meticulously perfect photos is that they don't come out that way right out of the camera. Um, they're built. And that's one of the great things of technology, obviously, is we can build that, obviously, a rough um, right there on the set so I can kind of see and, more importantly, show the client um, what they're getting and what they're paying for so everyone can kind of sign off and say, yeah, this is exactly what we want. Um, I think that if someone looks at a photograph and says, wow, that person is good at Photoshop, the photograph hasn't accomplished its task. I think that's only, that's not even half the, 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 the task of a good picture. The best picture is you may ask that question like, wow, how is that done? Or, but, but then you move beyond it and you realize that's kind of irrelevant more to what is this image about or even I can't shake this photograph. And that's what makes one good, is that I keep thinking about it. I keep wondering, what is it? What, what is it about the way the person is standing, the subtlety, the nuance? I can't figure out. It's, it's in a sense, unresolved in that lack of resolution, or maybe sometimes even the lack of technical, the, the awareness of the technique draws you in. He's, he's among the best in the world because there's just, there's no accidents, you know, there's, Everything is, um, if a client hires him, I imagine there's no fear whatsoever. He's going to come back with what the client wants and more. You know, again, it goes back to consistency. But all those things together, the passion is really the big thing. I mean, just, just loving what you, what, what you do, and he does. So um, all of those things together make him one of the best professionals around. I've followed that career, and I'm not just saying it because he's one of our students. But I look at hundreds and hundreds of uh, websites, and he's, he's, he's one of the best there is.